Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. The, we have f of square root of x squared plus y squared equals f of x times f of y. So what does it mean to solve a functional equation? We're looking for a function f that satisfies this equation for all x and y values in the domain. In this case, I want to restrict my domain to positive reals. So we can kind of define this function, hopefully, from positives to positives. But anyways, we're going to turn this into something we are familiar with. And we worked on that type of equation before. So let's go ahead and use substitution. Now, I don't like the square root inside the parentheses, so let's get rid of that. How about defining something like this? Of course, I, I know that x is positive, so square root of x is well defined. And let's go ahead and define f of square root of x as g of x. So it's very common with functional equations to define a function in terms of another one so you can make your equation simpler. And in this case, it's a great improvement you'll see in a little bit. Uh, by making this substitution, we're going to turn our equation in, into something more manageable. So this implies, of course, we're going to be doing a lot of substitutions here. I'm going to replace x with x squared. And since x is positive and y is positive, this just means that x can be written as square root of x squared, right? Without the absolute value. So let's go ahead and replace x with x squared on both sides. That gives us f of x equals g of x squared. Awesome. This is also good because we completely got rid of the square root symbol. Nice. Now, under these conditions, let's go ahead and... Uh, make the substitutions in our original equation. So we know that f of square root of something equals g of that thing. So f of square root of x squared plus y squared should equal g of x squared plus y squared. Nice. So this is the first step in getting rid of the square root. Now what about the right hand side of our original equation? What is f of x equal to? And we just got that here. f of x is the same as g of x squared which implies that f of y is the same as g of y squared. You know, a lot of times people say, hey, you set y equal to this, and then you said that x equals y. It doesn't matter. We just keep using these variables, and then we just throw them away, and we use them again. Same variable, but for different purposes. So now, I can basically replace f of x with g of x squared, and f of y with g of y squared here. And that gives us the following. The left hand side already turned into g of x squared plus y squared. And the right hand side is going to become g of x squared times g of y squared. And this is nice because now this hopefully, hopefully it looks like something we know. But I'm going to use more substitution here. So bear with me on that. I'm going to set x squared equal to another variable and y squared equal to another variable. I know that I already replaced x squared with, I think I said x squared. Did I say x squared equals something? So I didn't, so I'm fine. So let's go ahead and replace x squared with, how about z, and y squared with w. Okay. Well, it's not like equals, but it's more like replacement, right? So we get z, g of z plus w equals g of z plus g of w. Okay. Hmm. Does this look familiar? Hopefully. If it does, you're good to go. If it doesn't, I'll do one more step and I'm going to align both sides. Now, what is the motivation behind aligning both sides? Uh, well, I messed up on the right hand side. I just realized when I, as soon as I said ln, I'm like, what? They're added? No, they're being multiplied. I'm sorry about that. So this is a product. Yay. Okay. So now I'm going to ln both sides. Let's go ahead and ln this g of z plus w. If you are very picky about this, you can use parentheses around your, you know, thingy as well. And this one as well. No big deal, but some people are very strict about that. Okay, so now on the right hand side, I have something nice. The left hand side is okay. It's just, you know, ln something, but the right hand side can be broken down because it's the ln of a product. So I can write it as ln of gz 
plus ln of gw. Again, properties of logs, how commonly they're used. So on the left hand side, I have ln of this g thing, right? Now I'm going to use substitution again. I told you I was going to use it a lot. And the reason behind that is because I want to get rid of the ln. I could use e to the power, but that would just bring me back to the g. It wouldn't be an improvement. And at this point, I could probably do something else. But anyways, I'll just proceed with this one. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call this function h of z, right? So ln g of z is called h of z. Then this becomes h of w, and this becomes h of z plus w. Because ln g something is h, OK? So from here, we get something real cool. I hope you recognize this function now, right? OK. Now, is this function different from the g? Yes, it is, because g turned the sum into a product, but h turns the sum into a sum. So it's kind of like sum preserving. And this happens when you have a linear function, thanks to Cauchy, right? That is Cauchy's functional equation. Of course, needless to say, these functions are continuous, well-defined, so on and so forth. But anyways, uh, we don't necessarily need that. OK, so what am I supposed to do with this? Well, any function that satisfies this equation is like k times the variable. So it, it is a linear function, but with y-intercept 0. So it's something that goes through the origin. And you can plug it in and test it out, k times z plus w is the same thing as kz plus kw. Distributive property, right? Easy. Now, let's go ahead and back substitute everything. We got the result, but we're not looking for h. hz is equal to kz. Now, h, remember, was ln gz, right? So from here, if you do e to the power both sides, e to the power kz equals e to the power ln gz. But e to the power ln something is something. So from here, gz becomes e to the power kz. k is a constant, z is the variable. But what is gz? OK, if you go back, if you go back, gx is f of square root of x. So gz would be f of square root of z, right? Finally, we're almost there. Now, I want to find f of x, uh, but this is f of square root of z. Let's go ahead and replace z with x squared, and you're done. f of x equals e to the power kx squared. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.